Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video, first we're gonna talk about Nick Walker and his health update. So, as you can see on his Instagram, he posted this uh, piece of paper, it is his CT calcium score. Now, obviously, I'm not a freaking doctor, I don't know too much about this stuff, but I do know that aside from the blood work that you should do at least like once a year, and the stuff like EKG, this is very important too, uh, this is commonly a cause of a heart attack if your calcium score is bad what this test does is it specifically it uh, looks for calcium deposits in the coronary arteries that can narrow arteries and increase the risk of heart attack so he did this test and apparently it was zero which is ideal you should not have any calcium buildup. If you had some, a little bit, it's still not horrible, but uh, ideally you should have zero, and apparently Nick has zero, which means the likelihood of him dying young from a heart attack is much, much smaller now that we know that his uh, calcium score is zero. And also this piece of paper means that he managed to shut up all of us YouTubers who were talking about uh, whether he's growing too fast, whether he's gonna end up like Dallas McCarver, but even though he doesn't look very healthy, he is. At least his heart seems to be fine. Now the fact that we can see faces on his uh, legs due to his varicose veins, but apparently this is mainly a cosmetic issue, it's not really a health hazard, so believe it or not, he is actually pretty healthy. Does this change everything really? I mean, yeah, his heart seems to be alright, but the fact that he's growing so fast, it, it probably has some consequences. You guys know that when Dallas McCarver died, he had an organomegaly. All of his organs were much increased in size, and that wasn't very healthy either. Anyways, uh, this is him right now. He looks pretty good right now. He had to shave his head, by the way, due to a uh, lost bet. So without hair, he also looks a little bit more nasty and uh, not super healthy, but <laughs> apparently he's healthy. And it looks like he got a little bit harder. So I'm guessing he finally started, you know, uh, blasting gear. I thought he was cruising for a while because he looked a little bit smoother for, for a time there, but now it looks like he is back because he does start to look a little bit harder, rounder, fuller, so hopefully this blast during this year before the Mr. Olympia is not gonna ruin his health, um, his calcium score is great, but uh, hopefully everything else is too, what do you guys think? Alright, next story is interesting, but sort of expected, wouldn't you say? It is actually Brion Ainsley retiring from Classic Physique. Now, I don't know if his plans are to compete in bodybuilding in 212 or man physique or something like that. Anything is possible at this point, but uh, no more Classic Physique. So here he says uh, he's 206 pounds, uh, natural light, blah blah blah. And he says, as this is going to be my last year in Classic Division. I have a few exciting details to share with you guys uh, on the game plan that brings us uh, confidence we will contend uh, for the title again. Um, he's going to win the Classic Mr. Olympia, that's what he's saying, which is obviously not gonna happen. Uh, he has been on a down path for a while there, you know, he was a Mr. Olympia winner you know, in Classic Physique, and then uh, he was beaten by Chris Bumstead, then also by Terence, and at the Arnold he was also beaten by Ramon and Urs, so he's like fifth classic physique guy right now, and until Mr. Olympia he may go even uh, even lower, depending on who else shows up. But his problem was his legs. You know, one of his legs uh, really lost a lot of size, so that was a bad uh, asymmetry there. And also, like he, he's fading away slowly. He is not at his prime anymore. He's I believe 44, 45 right now. And that's a little bit long in the tooth for a classic bodybuilder. For open bodybuilding, if you have good genetics, sure, you can do well, because you will be gnarly, you know, your skin is gonna look thinner and all that, but in classic physique, that's mainly a young guy division. Like, Chris and Ramon are both same age, like 26 right now. Urs, who is 23, I think, and uh, I don't think Terence is, like, uh, over 30. A uh, majority of those guys are very, very young, so it's, it's a young man division, really. And uh, Brian is he's fading away year after year, and now he he failed miserably. I mean, he was beaten by top five from the Mr. Olympia. He's fifth right now. I mean, from being the winner to going down to fifth, this probably means he should he should stop. You know, so this is gonna be his last year. Hopefully, he will bring his absolute best and uh, maybe beat some. I don't really see him beating Gors. I don't see I don't see him beating uh, Ramon or Terence. I don't think, I think the best case scenario for him will be fifth. 
and and that's gonna be tough. So whether he's gonna move to cla- uh, to to twelve or the open, or I mean I'm I'm saying man's physique because he's losing legs, but I don't think uh, a bodybuilder can go down to man's physique. So I'm thinking probably two twelve. He used to compete in two twelve, but uh, my my guess would be he's gonna retire completely. Because he knows he can no longer be the Mr. Olympia. Does he want to keep competing to be in top 6 at the Mr. Olympia? Possibly go even lower? It's probably not a good idea. If he decided to compete once again, not to retire after the Arnold, then do like all-out prep for the, for the Mr. Olympia, place as high as possible, which is probably 5th, and retire right there and then. What do you guys think? What do you think about this classic guy? So he says, what do you think? Can I make uh, the weight for classic? Of course, he's joking. I mean, he's being uh, cocky, saying that he's uh, way too big for classic. But you know what? I, I think some of the classic guys would actually beat him, you know, with conditioning, with better shape, with smaller waist. You know, like Chris Bumstead, uh, fool. And, and uh, Chris Bumstead doesn't have to work too hard for a weight cap against Blessing in an open show. I don't know who'd win there, I'm not sure, so uh, I'm thinking Blessing is being a little bit too cocky. Uh, anyways, uh, here uh, he's doing a classic pose. Does this pose look very classic? I mean, he has an interesting shape, but the waist is really not that small. As you can see, he has a very wide rib cage, and also his waist is a little bit wider. Interesting shape once again, but not really much of a flow. Now, his coach right now is George Farah. I don't know really what he was thinking with that. There are probably better coaches out there. He probably should have kept with uh, with Chad Nichols. I'm not saying George Farah is a bad uh, a bad coach, but lately, you know, he hasn't really had much success. He has been fighting uh, an illness. So, yeah, I mean, I'm happy that, that, that somebody hired George Farah. He's a really nice guy, but I just don't know how devoted can George Farah be. George Farah was a great coach back in the day. He was coaching Daxter Jackson, Kai Green, and many others. But right now, he's not really at the top of the list of the coaches. And uh, maybe this is his opportunity to actually prove to, to the world that he's still very good. So if Blessing finally does well, if he comes conditioned and big, which he never really did. Like last year, he had a decent conditioning. He wasn't super crispy, but he lost a lot of size, you know. And this time around, like, he gained some, he's really big and full right now still, but can he really lose the weight and keep the fullness? There are certain instances when people think that they are bigger than they actually are, and when they lose the weight, they are, that they actually see how small they are. I don't think that's the case with, with uh, Blessing, because he apparently doesn't have a lot of body fat. Now, like, his glutes could be much softer than everything else. That also happens. You have one stubborn body part. And as they say, you're only as lean as your fattest body part. And so you need to, you need to go all the way in. You need to lose the fat from every area. And if that means sacrificing a little bit of muscle, then so be it. You need to be conditioned. And maybe sometimes it's not really worth the sacrifice. But I don't think Blessing is holding more fat, like, in the glutes or something like that. I feel like his body fat is pretty evenly distributed and um, I don't know, I think something is is off with his approach. I know I heard that Chad Nichols is very aggressive in his approach. He go, he does this really low carb uh, periods, uh, like low calories, and, and he carbs you up insanely, but sometimes it's too late, you get too flat. So maybe he didn't like his approach, maybe George Farah has a little bit more conservative approach. I don't know how this guy is, uh, started working together, what was the reason. I hope it will work, I hope we will see the best version of Blessing. What do you guys think is gonna happen with George Farah? Alright, we also have another guy who is uh, prepping, we can say he's making a comeback, this is uh, Sadik Hadjovic. Uh, he's uh, from around here, actually, from the Balkans. Uh, I don't know, I mean, he, he competed like in man's physique, he was a runner-up to Jeremy Buendia back in the day, then he started with classic physique as soon as it got out, uh, he was invited to the Mr. Olympia, and he placed third, and he was like 6th, 7th, 7th, I believe, and he was gone, so... Can he do really well in classic? No, against these other guys who are absolute uh, genetic freaks, no, but he wants to go back to the man's physique now. Now, last time he did a man's physique, he also failed miserably, so can he really be competitive over there now? 
I don't know about that either because those guys right now at the top are real freaks. Like they're much freakier than what the Jeremy Buendia and Sadiq used to look back in the day. So I don't I don't see it. I don't know. Maybe he should just go for the classic and like not really expect to win the pro shows. I don't know. I mean he I I would love to see him in classic because he has an interesting physique and of course it's more interesting to see a guy prep for uh, classic physique because he's actually able to pose and uh, you know for man's physique I don't really think he has a chance but in classic maybe he can get the Mr. Olympic qualification somehow and just competing at the Mr. Olympia and like cracking the top 10 somehow which is very hard to accomplish I think will be a bigger success than to be like I don't know sixth in man's physique at the Mr. Olympia uh, from being second from from almost winning it a couple of years ago what do you guys though think about Sadiq Hadjovic? How do you think he will do in men's physique against the other guys that are like dominating the top of the Mr. Olympia right now, those freaking freaks? And can he do well in classic physique? We haven't really heard or seen much from this guy for, for a while there, so what do you guys think? Please don't forget to like the video and to subscribe to this channel for more videos like this. All the best guys, thank you so much for watching and bye bye.